Hello, I'm Ryan F9, and these are 10 mods that actually really make a difference. I break mirrors like all the yeller breaks hearts. When you off-road a lot, they're just disposable. Double take has a hideously effective solution. Their armor encased mirror hinges on a ram ball mount. So it can take a good whack from the tree of evil, but also pivot out of the way when I drop it on something immovable, like the ground. Proactively, well, I just fold the mirrors inward when I'm bombing trails. It takes all of two seconds with the double ball clamp, and it helps me pretend that my budgie KLR is really a dirt bike. For such a movable mirror, I'm shocked to say that these never vibrate and migrate out of position. Only downside is that they look as utilitarian as Stalin's eyebrows. But so do dual sport and adventure motorcycles en masse. So considering that I'll never have to buy mirrors again, I can live with it. A lithium battery is one-fifth the weight of the lead-acid brick that came with your motorcycle. Most of us could stand to lose somewhere north of five pounds from somewhere north of the bike's center of gravity. Sport and dual sport riders should be salivating at the performance gains. Cruiser and cafe folks will also be psyched that these are half the size. Tiny dry cells that can be mounted in any orientation are easier to slot into custom bikes. Lithium does not sulfate when sitting, so you can forget the trickle charger all winter without damaging your battery. There are some Canadian complications though. You have to warm lithium batteries up before cranking, and you can't charge them below zero degrees Celsius unless you want it really warm. We've got a whole comparison test video coming up, so for now I'll just say there are pros and cons, but nothing outweighs the huge weight savings. Moose figured out another performance mod. They call it the dual sprocket. Typically you have to choose steel or aluminum. Steel sprockets are stronger, so the teeth take longer to jump the shark. Aluminum wears away quicker, but it's lighter. Less weight for your engine to spin means more horsepower to the ground. Less weight for your suspension to spring means quicker reaction times. Here's the game changer. Light aluminum on the inside and strong steel to wear against your chain. It's an objectively better way to build a sprocket. I expect to see a lot more of these. The fact that using two materials lets you do a dope two-tone is just gravy. You can get blue, green, orange, red, any of the motorcycle colors, basically. Here's a mod that improves your body's performance, the inline filter. Splice it into your hydro pack, and you can drink from the next stream without dying of dysentery. The Sawyer Mini is small but powerful. Its 0.1 micron filter is fine enough to stop damn near everything, yet not so resistive that it doesn't suck. If you clean the filter occasionally by shooting pure water backwards, it should last through 100,000 gallons. Meaning you can purify all your daily drinking water while you ride for 548 years. Now on to the luxury mods. Most new bikes come with lovely digital dashes, but anyone on an older machine is getting sick of staring at the ravages of time. Trail Tech makes neat tiny gauges to replace the stock setup on any bike. Any bike. Because they use their own workaround sensors. Temperature sensors that splice into coolant hoses. Speedo sensors that pick up magnets stuck to the brake rotor. Tack sensors that wind around spark plug cables to feel electrical pulses. It's genius. An installation might take the afternoon, but at least you know it's all gonna work together. For a hundred bucks, you get the minimal model that makes your bike legal. And for $600, you can have a fancy color touchscreen dash that doubles as a GPS unit, triples as a buddy tracker, quadruples as a Bluetooth communication and entertainment center. I'm a big fan of this game changer. It let me go from this to this. On a long tour, there's nothing more refreshing than opening your vents and roasting your buttocks. The hot and cold sensation will rival a Slavic sauna. 
pure bliss when you're 10 hours into highway hypnosis. However, if you're looking at a heated seat, you're looking at a $30,000 motorcycle. Can you hear it calling? Not so, my fellow cheap bastards. Saddleman makes a universal kit that will turn your rusty piece of shit into a luxury touring spa for only a hundred bucks and change. The element goes under your seat cover, might have to yank a few staples to get it in there. It's carbon fiber, so the heat distribution is more even than wire or foil elements, meaning you shouldn't get foam melting hotspots, but use this included heat shield just in case. Then these leads go to your battery. They have their own fuse box, so no need to mess with yours. And finally, the switch can be drilled into your dash, a side panel, whatever. As an owner of obscure motorcycles and minimal tools, I love universal and simple mods like this. A bit of patience and prior planning is all you need to make a clean installation. A final luxury mod is the Scorpio security system. Again, you can add this to any bike for a few hundred bucks, less if there's an insurance rebate, and it will rival the system on a $30,000 motorcycle. The main harness is basically a motion sensor, but it's a modular system, so you can add things like a perimeter sensor, an ignition shutoff, a GPS unit if you wanna share your rides with friends, or a thief's ride with the cops. Everything goes to this slick keychain, which also acts as the RFID that disarms the system. When it triggers, I'll know if someone is just near my bike, or if they moved it or tried to start it. My two favorite features are that it displays my motorcycle battery's voltage, so I know exactly when to charge that. Also, I can chirp the alarm remotely to scare children. Uh, stepping down from luxury and into basic comfort, we have rocks risers. This is the single biggest thing you can do to make your bike fit. Stock bars only lean forward and back. Rocks risers fill the stock clamps and hold the bar above, so now I have two pivot points. Closer and more upright, further and angled back, you can achieve whatever is comfortable for touring or standing or whatever you're doing. It's worth getting the anti-vibration ones. They have two rubber bushings just so your hands and mirrors don't go numb. Speaking of, GV hand covers. I've had these on snowmobiles in the past and oh man, do they keep your fingers warm. It's a rule, anything that looks this dorky must work brilliantly. They're basically little warming huts for your grips and levers. Installation takes all of three minutes. Stitching is reflective because winter is dark and there are thumb out dents so you can still poke your switch gear. Kinda. Now some people will say that seems dangerous, that seems unnecessary, but the people who say that put less mileage on their motorcycles in a year than the people who use these put on their scooters in a week. So shut up. Our final and only aesthetic mod is the Bridgestone AX41S. Tires are the most overlooked part of motorcycle styling, but not anymore. If we fail to consider rubber as a style item, then painstakingly customized bikes are wasted on boring donuts. We can do much better. This is designed like a scrambler tire, which looks wild. But underneath, it's a very average street tire available in very common sizes. So anyone can throw a set on their bike and start turning heads. Until now, you've had to sacrifice a lot of pavement performance or a lot of money to get a rare looking tread on your bike. But Bridgestone is changing that game. Thank you very much for watching.